This video is about finding the orbital period of a satellite or if it's a planet orbiting around a star. So we got a, a planet A and satellite B. So planet A, satellite B, and planet A with mass M, capital M, and the satellite small m, and they have a radius of r. The r is the distance from the center of the planet to the, the center of the satellite, so which is the orbit here. So this is a circular motion where we have got a linear velocity v, and there's a centripetal force, which is actually a net force. The net force is provided by the the gravitational force due to the mass of the planet and mass of the satellite. So if we write equations for both, so we have got the gravitational force is equal to g m m over r squared and the centripetal force is equal to m v squared over r. So those are equal because what's happening is that the centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force. So we have m v squared over r is equal to g m m over r. So from this that we can find out v is equal to g m over r. In one of our previous videos we went through the whole steps and we got this equation for the orbital velocity. Now what we are going to find out is that orbital period t. So in a circular motion what we have is that if um, this planet, if this satellite is taking say t, time t, to complete one orbit, that means it is completing a distance of 2 pi r. So from this, we can write the velocity, which is the linear velocity, is equal to 2 pi r over t. So here t is the time it takes for the satellite to complete an orbit. So, so we have this equation here, and using equation 1 and 2, we can derive a formula for the period t. So what we do is that we substitute the formula, which is velocity is equal to 2 pi r t in equation 2. So let's, um, v is equal to skirt of g m over r. So which means v squared is equal to g m over r. So instead of v squared, what we can do is we can put 2 pi r over t, whole thing squared, is equal to g m over r. So that be like 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared is equal to g capital M divided by r. And from this we can find out t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g m. So we got t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed over g m. So we can um, rearrange the equation like t squared over r cubed is equal to 4 pi squared over g m. And if you look at this, 4 pi squared, if you look at this, everything here is a constant for a particular uh, planet, a satellite is orbiting around. So mass is the mass of the planet, and pi is a constant, g is a constant. So if you have a planet, and there are two satellites, they are orbiting around 
at a different orbit, like this is A, this is B. So what we know is that for this one, the let's take the radius RA, and for this one, the radius is RB, RB, and for this one, the period is TA, and for this one, the period is TB. So because of the mass, a constant mass, we can say that T a squared divided by R a cubed is equal to T B squared divided by R B cubed. So what we are finding is that two orbits around a planet where there's a relationship between the uh, T's and R's. And you might find out in one of the other videos that we are discussing about Kepler's laws. One of his law was about the relationship between T and R, and he proposed that the T squared is proportional to R cubed. But the only difference is that using the Newton's gravitational um, the formula, we were able to find that constant because from here, what we are finding out is that T squared is proportional to R cubed. And Kepler came up with this uh, relationship, but he never found what that constant was. But using the formula, we know that constant is 4 pi squared over gm. And this formula is very useful whenever we need to solve problems where we know the period of one particular orbit and we know the radius of two orbits and we want to find the period of the other orbits. And if we know the three values, we can find the fourth value. And you can also notice that if we have a planet here, and this is a small orbit, and it's a large orbit, and if this is T1, it is T2, we know that the T2 is greater than T1 because it takes longer for it to orbit around uh, through the larger orbit. But we also know that, say for this is R1 and this is R2, and the, so there's a relationship between T1 and R1, T2 and R2. So we can say T1 squared is proportional to R1 cubed, T2 squared is proportional to R2 cubed. And from here, T1 squared is equal to K times R1 cubed because when we say something is proportional, we can add a constant to it. And T2 squared is equal to K times R2 cubed. And this is what Kepler's came up with. Kepler's came up with this formula where he said that the period is, uh, period squared is proportional to the cube of the radius. But the k is a constant, and that's what we see here. This is that constant, that k is equal to 4 pi squared over gm. That's the constant that uh, we derive from the Newton's gravitation uh, formula. Uh, Kepler uh, basically said that it's proportional, but he never found out what that constant is. So, so we got um, two satellites x and y they're in circular orbits and the mass is the mass is identical but their orbit radius is r and 16r so that's our planet and that's one of them and that's uh, another one So this is x and this is y. And what we know is that radius is r and that radius is 16r. And in this case, that radius that we are measuring is from the center. We are assuming that uh, the orbital radius, that means that it is from the center. So we can do from the uh, first principles, uh, find an equation for t 
or you can use the one that we have for the orbital velocity g m over r and for v we can substitute 2 pi r over t so so if we substitute that what we have found out is that t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g m so for x so from here we know that t squared over r cubed is equal to 4 pi squared over g m because uh, both satellites are orbiting the same planet which is earth this 4 pi squared gm is the same for both so if we look at x and y we can say that tx squared over rs cubed is same as ty squared divided by ry cubed which is equal to 4 pi squared over g m because m is the same for both uh, satellites so we want to find out what is tx over ty but let's find out tx squared over ty squared from the this equation that will be same as rx cubed divided by ry cubed so that's equal to what is rx cubed um, which is r cubed because we know that radius is r and for this one the radius is 16 r so r cubed divided by 16 r so 16 cube r cube which is equal to 1 over 4096 um, that is tx over ty squared so so from that we can find out that tx over ty is equal to 1 over 64 because square root of 4096 is 64 so the ratio between tx and ty is equal to 1 is to 64 so that's the answer so it's an interesting one so we got two different planets and satellites orbiting around both planets and their orbital radius is the same but the mass of the planets are different so what we are given here is that mass of earth if it is m and mass of um, so if it is m and mass of the other planet is 4m um, and they are saying it's an identical satellite orbits so which means we are talking about the same um, satellite um, so what's the period of satellite orbiting the second planet so here the period is t and we want to find out what's the period here so say from this is you know, just put x and y okay so we got the formula t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed over gm that's what we derived in the previous uh, screen so in these two scenarios you can see that um, the mass is different for both satellites the mass of the planets but the radius is the same right so for x we can write because we have been given the period as t so t squared is equal to um, 4 pi squared r cubed over g is constant right so so we can write 1 over m so in fact we can write t x t squared is equal to k over m the reason i'm putting k is because that's constant and for the other one the other planet so this i'm going to put t 
not x. Let me raise that. So it's t, and that's a planet. I'm going to. So that's not y either. That's x. So. So this is um, x. It's t x. This is t e, which is t. It's already given to us. And if we use the same thing for that planet, so t x squared is equal to k over 4m, right? Because we are given it's 4m. So what we can do is, so that's equation 1, this is equation 2. So what we can do now is we can divide equation 2 by equation 1. We get tx squared divided by t squared is equal to, we will get m over 4m m over 4m which is 1 fourth so what we get from here is t x squared is equal to t squared divided by 4 that means t x is equal to t by 2 so that's what we were asked to find out the the orbital period for the second planet in terms of t, so it is half t. So that's the